Madden 24 launches worldwide today on the 18th of August, which means, and I guess it was like the 17th night, doesn't really matter. A lot of you guys might be new to the game and are like, how does scouting work at all? Well, I'm going to break it down for you plainly and simply. I'm going to tell you what you want to do, what you want to look for in each position to figure out how to get the best players. I feel like I've got a pretty good grasp on things, so pretty much we're always going to come out of the draft with some of the best players possible, and if you want to do the same, watch this video, hit that subscribe button, and uh, check out the rest of the content on the channel. But it starts out with just looking at the prospects. It's week one, we obviously don't have a ton of information, so what do we do? How do we even go about this? Your first step is to go into the region breakdown. This is going to give you the strengths of the entire draft class as a whole and also the weaknesses. So what you want to do is align scouts that fit those top strengths because, and there will be outliers here just because wide receiver, quarterback, and right end are the top strengths of the class doesn't mean that maybe a corner isn't the best overall player. So it's important to find those outliers with certain weeks where you can do advanced scouting on players. It's week 11, and that's the last week before the draft. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the most depth, the highest concentration of skill in this draft class nationally will be at those three positions, wide receiver, quarterback, and right end. And that goes for every single region in here. For the West, defensive tackle, QB, right end. Central, corner, wide receiver, right tackle. Northeast, quarterback, right end, wide receiver. And then Southeast, wide receiver, right end, and quarterback. You can see the trend here in this draft class, at least, is quarterback. Probably a lot of good QBs in this class. But what you want to do is go into manage scouts, and you can fire everybody. There's no salary associated with any of these guys. There's no penalty for cleaning house every single year. So that's what you want to do. Every single year, Go through and get new scouts that align with those top position groups or in some cases your most needed positions depending on what team you're using. So I'm going to try to find a scout here that matches up for wide receiver and quarterback. They added a bunch of new scout types so there is a potential for that existing like we have quarterback tight end. Mostly it's going to be offense offense but there are times where it's offense defense like interior offensive line and defensive tackle for Logan Mankins, Patriots and Bucks legend at I believe left guard I think it was, was he a right guard I think it was a left guard middle linebacker and quarterback is a weird combo to me but some say middle linebacker is the quarterback of the defense anyway just match the things up with what you want so there are only one and two star quarterback wide receiver combos and you do not want to make your two star scout your national scout the three star scout gets the biggest boost, you always, always, always want to have your three-star scout be your national scout. It's super important. I would also recommend if you have to favor one position over the other, in this case, like we do for national, I would favor wide receiver because there are more of them versus quarterback where there's only going to be about five or six top guys. There are about 40 different receivers that you might want to consider drafting for one reason or another at various spots on the board. So, Favor the position that's going to have more players in it. And QB is always going to have the least amount of players draftable, really. Maybe running back in there as well, but it, I would I would try to get your national scout to be the, the guy who is best with receivers. And also remember, you can only have one three-star and one two-star scout at the same time. So it's you're going to have to mix and match you know, for your desired result. Okay, so we have these scouts aligned. This is what it should look like where you have the yellow binoculars for each one. Now, I will make this point that you don't necessarily have to match it up every time. They will do a better job. It's a 5% efficiency boost for scouting these positions when it's actually in within their skill set. However, it's not like they can't scout the other positions. You just don't get the 5% efficiency boost. So if you're in here and you're looking at the region prospects and there's, you know, let's say a right outside linebacker that you really like and that's the guy you want to scout you know it doesn't have to be oh i can only get the guy who does corner and receiver if you want to get outside linebacker inside linebacker in there and get this particular player scouted more effectively you can do that as well but for the sake of this video and getting the most amount of players scouted as much as possible i've decided to align everything so you guys can see just how well it does it when you've done it effectively 
and I used it a lot interchangeably there, just how well it scouts the players when you've aligned the scouts to the positions effectively. Week three is the first time that there's anything to do. I usually don't stop here because it's not super important. You can simulate through the midseason mark if you want to, but this is just making sure all the scouts are aligned at their correct positions. So this is choose regional scouting focus here in week three. Again, not super important, but you're just making sure everybody's where they need to be, but it'll do their default position by default if you don't choose to do anything. So uh, you might want to scout it just to make sure nothing goes wrong. You know, choosing defensive end or defensive tackle if you want that particular uh, thing to get a boost. And in this case, the top strength of the region, as you can barely see in the top right, is defensive tackle. So I'll just align it to be the top position in the region. But again, I would highly recommend actually checking to see the players first. So if you look, first of all, quarterback Mike White, love to see that. Jets legend. But if you come in here and see Alan Stamper and you go, okay, he looks pretty good, but physically, maybe decent to solid speed, which is about average to below average, as you can see on the scale, but, you know, probably around 90. So not terrible, not amazing. Maybe it's 89, uh, but not amazing. But maybe for that reason, you don't want to draft him. You don't want to scout him. Don't leave it on corner. You know, try to get another player scouted a bit more. So again, you can change that focus position if you'd like. The 5% boost is nice, but it's not the end-all be-all. Like, you could even do quarterback if you wanted to. You could even do right guard for the West if you wanted to, if you saw a player you liked enough. Although I will say it's not the worst idea for your two-star scout to actually scout his preferred position. You get a 15% efficiency boost. And I would say at that point, it's a difference maker. The next big moment is week 11. You'll get access to three players that you can scout further, and you get like a 40% boost on them. I will say, historically, prospect spotlight does not matter at all. It doesn't mean the player is going to be good. It doesn't mean they're even going to have a good development trait. It means nothing. I wouldn't worry about it. And you can see already, because we've done a really good job aligning the positions, already mid-season, we know the true talent of a number of different players. So we know Lonnie Ramsey's not worth drafting in the first round. The true talent is round two to three. Now, I will say, I have turned up the draft class strength for the video and i'm doing another video after this within the same league so some of these players might actually be worth drafting that you're seeing based on their skill set but it might be lower within the actual class because everything's juiced up right now but i figured maybe it all scales out the same so it doesn't really matter but uh yeah look at all these quarterbacks dude this is an unbelievable quarterback class nine guys that could be first round picks that's insane but again, I would usually recommend using your focus scouting on, well, first of all, players where you have a lot of question marks. Maybe the range is very unclear, but also I would recommend using it on players that are outside of the skill set that are not going to be scouted further at this point. So let's say I like the look of Chase Sellers from Texas. He's got A run blocking. And we have nobody really scouting tackles. So the only way we're going to increase his percentage and get a better idea of how he is as a player is getting those ranges A to C for impact blocking, awareness, pass blocking figured out a little bit more. And the focus scouting is going to get a big boost on that. So in this particular scenario, I'm going to do three tackles. Doesn't mean that's what you should do, right? It's going to vary based on the class. But in this case, we're not having anyone scout tackles very much at all. So if we want to know more about them, we have to do it ourselves. And then the next moment is not till the actual draft week, pretty much. It's the week prior. So don't simulate all the way to the draft if you're doing a rebuild type video. And you're probably going to go through free agency anyway. But you're going to have to simulate to the offseason and then go week by week to the week just before the draft week, which is the final week of the offseason. Free agency week one is going to have the combine results. Here's what I'll say about the combine results. They're cool. I would not say that they're ultra important, for example. We're going to pull up Jarrell Palmer here. And we'll, I haven't checked him out. We'll see what he runs here. But physically, ran 4.38. Now, that number could have been 4.48, could have been 4.28. But what's most important is not the actual time, in my experience. It's what the rating says on the side. So it gives him great speed and elite acceleration. Even if he didn't run amazingly well at the combine, we can see that great and elite are the top two that you can have. 
So he's going to be very, very fast. Regardless of what that 40 time says, we know this guy is a freak athlete at 6'4", 222, seeing great and elite speed or acceleration. Very, very good. The skills are good on him. Obviously, it kind of goes without saying, but you're looking for A's at important attributes. That's what it is. And for a receiver, obviously catching traffic, catching medium route running, deep route running, short route running, spectacular catch, release more than stiff arm or break tackle. Although those things can be important too. I would say, what do you want them to do? If he's a six foot four receiver, his short route running might be a little bit worse. Or his deep route running could, could be worse if he's uh, just a pure possession guy. If you're going to have a slot receiver, he might not have the highest catch in traffic. So figure out what you want that player to be able to do, and then kind of, you know, you can value it differently. And what I mean by that, if you have a power rush outside linebacker, well, he's going to be an edge player for you. He's going to be a pass rusher off the edge. So when I'm looking at a player like that, I don't really care about zone coverage or man coverage right? I care about either finesse moves or power moves. You don't need both, but it's amazing when they are good at both. And block shedding is pretty much the two main ones that I look at. Play rec and awareness and tackling also important, but I really like to look at block shed and how good they are at actually doing their job. And for an outside linebacker that's a power rush archetype, you care about him rushing the passer. For an outside linebacker here that's a pass coverage archetype, He's not going to be able to rush the passer pretty much at all. So his skill set is you see D finesse moves and you see C to F power moves. That doesn't really matter. You're looking more at pursuit, tackling, block shedding, play rec awareness, and then his zone and man coverage as well. And hit power too, of course, for a linebacker. And then the final week that you can do focus scouting, in this case, private workouts, you know, it'd be your uh, top 30 visits, right? Free agency recap week right before the draft. Now, at this point, the way I would strategize with it is not just do positions that are not going to be further scouted, right? Not just, oh, well, left tackle, we need to know more about, or, you know, right tackle or whatever. These are the players that you're probably really thinking about drafting, or maybe some guys that you want to take off your board in some cases where it's, you know, 50-50 to whether they can be really, really good or not and you want to learn what their true talent is. That's usually what this is for. So let's say I like the look of Marcus McGee, but I'm not sure that he is a top five player in the class, but at 75% scouted, if I use him to be a focus player, we're going to jump that up to 100% and get his true talent range. You don't get it at 95%. It has to be 100. So this is where you want to find out just how good these players are. And Jarrell Palmer, I thought looked awesome. So I want to find out if he's really, truly as good as I think. And we're going to scout him up to 100% to get his true talent within the class, either top five, round one, round one to two, or even further back. And I'll tell you, a player like this, A finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle, A to C block shed, Dom Nelson's going to be incredible. Whenever you see that combination for a defensive end, A finesse moves and A power moves, that's pretty rare. And again, I have these draft classes juiced so you guys can see what really good players actually look like. But for the most part, if you see a bunch of A's at important attributes, they're gonna be really good. Okay, so NFL draft time. Finally, we can find out if our work over the past year is gonna result in a good draft class. I'm gonna tell you it is for free. But as you can see, up to 100% now. Up to 100, we have top five talent on Palmer, McGee, and the defensive end, I'm pretty sure. I would bet, just because he looked so good. I'd be shocked if he was anything else. Where is he? I pass him? Where's Dom Nelson? He's a left end. Where did he go? Did he leave? He's like, I don't want to get drafted by you. You were too bad last year. Oh, there he is. Oh, it only got up to 95%. So there you go. I, I uh, miscounted or didn't realize, but I, I would bet he's going to be pretty good. A, awareness, that's an attribute, or excuse me, overall booster. That awareness and play record overall boosters, kind of artificial boosters, I'll say. He's got C, block shed. That's like average. That's fine. A, finesse moves is elite. A, power moves elite. A, pursuit, A, tackle. He's going to end up being a monster. But again, this particular draft class is mega juiced. You usually will not see this combination of amazing, like, generational type players. But uh, we have them in this class, and I'm going to up and draft a few of them we'll start with Jarrell Palmer here 
a wide receiver. Again, anytime you see this amount of A's, it's just going to be really good. But you want to pair that with good athleticism usually, and that's what I do. You know, I like to see great acceleration and speed and change of direction. And of course, strength is more important for defensive linemen and offensive linemen. But Jarrell Palmer looks really good. We're going to draft him. Hidden Dev, obviously. 94 speed. Why are you wearing number 27 as a receiver? That's pain. Whatever. Sky Moore wears number in the 20s. I hate it. 99 jumping. 96 acceleration. 86 agility. And keep in mind, the bigger and taller you get, like, so like, you know, 6'4", 220, 230, the harder it is for those guys to be fast and quick. So change of direction and agility, you can kind of except that being lower for someone that's, you know, a height, weight, speed freak. And uh, Jarrell Palmer, 86 agility, 82 change of direction, not that bad. He's going to be great. And look at all the A's. I mean, he's even going to be unbelievable as a ball carrier. A, ball carrier vision, break tackle, carrying, stiff arm. I don't know, trucking's probably good too. He is just amazing. Okay, we traded for pick number two. And even if we were thinking about a quarterback... We know that Jose Moss is round one to two talent. Maybe we wouldn't want to take that guy there. Or maybe because he's a quarterback and we might need a quarterback, we would be okay with taking somebody that is not super high overall because they have good accuracy or, or maybe he was really fast or whatever the case may be. Some of these positions, it's just tougher to get really high rated players. So I wouldn't say don't draft a player just because they don't fall within the top range of the draft. You know, play it by ear, see what you want to do. Uh, Marcus McGee is who we're going to take. He's got B block shed, A finesse moves, B power moves, A tackle. Physically, he's got elite speed, great strength, elite change of direction, elite agility. Kind of goes without saying, but yeah. The higher rated their athletic ratings are, so you're looking at great and elite, and then the more A's and B's that they have, they're going to be very good. Marcus McGee, hidden development, 92 strength, 80 speed, 84 acceleration, He's going to be a beast. And this is the last pick I'm going to make. It is the defensive end that I said looked very good. Dom Nelson and just the combination of A finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle. Physically, solid enough athlete. Like, good speed is good for a defensive end. That is obvious, but it's above average. Solid is, you know, right at that bang average. And then he has elite acceleration, which is super important for edge rushers. Great agility and change of direction is just kind of icing on the cake. And then great strength is is very, very good. Dom Nelson, welcome to the team. 88 strength, 91 acceleration. That's already amazing. 82 speed, agility and change of direction. Just don't matter all that much for these type of players. Defensive ends. So we crushed the draft, but it would have been tough not to. This is a stack draft class. The strength multiplier is turned up all the way for every position. And yeah, obviously we crushed the draft. Jarrell Palmer is an 83 overall. The defensive tackle is an 82, and he's an 80 overall plus for different archetypes as well. 80 slot, 81 deep threat. His ratings are incredible. 99 jumping is obviously amazing. His route running is really good. 89 catch and traffic, spectacular catch. Yeah, he's a beast. 87 catching. Would be super fun to have in a franchise. And on top of all that athleticism and natural ability... He's 6'4", 222, so he's going to have the size to go down the field and make plays to be a beast in the red zone. Here's another guy, 6'5", 305. Age is important, too. You like to try and draft guys that are like 21 years old over someone who's 23, longer to develop. He's a freak. 92 strength, 80 speed, 86 finesse moves is super high out of the draft. 86 tackles, super high. Block shedding is not even that bad at a 74. Power moves is just another thing he can do at 77, which isn't so bad. So yeah, he's another super talented player. And then Dom Nelson is a 79 overall. Speed rusher, but 78 power rusher. 82 speed, 91 acceleration, 88 strength as we knew, but 80 finesse moves, 77 power moves. Block shedding is a 69. It's nice, but also it could be better, but that's what a C is. A C is going to be about average room for growth. Anything that starts with an A is in an elite spot already. Now, I think we might see a corner at the top here, or maybe some other receivers. But we look at the rest of the class. We had the number one player. We had the number two player. Joel Nash, the quarterback, is an 82. Jose was the quarterback we had scouted at 100. Oh, this quarterback has 98 speed. 
So I didn't notice that. It's important to, you know, check all these guys out. 91 throw power, 88 short accuracy throw on the run and break sack, and then 98 speed, 94 acceleration, 94 agility, 96 change of direction. Yeah, so if you saw a player like that, it's an instant drop everything and draft them. They're okay, pretty good quarterback already. Maybe they have elite A, short accuracy, throw on the run, break sack, all those things. That's nice. Throw power probably would have been good to great in the athletic ratings at 91. Maybe just good, maybe solid. Who cares? They had absolutely elite speed. He would have run in like the four twos at quarterback. So you would have seen that if you had actually been, you know, playing the franchise. But uh, yeah, that's a freak player. And you want to go ahead and draft those guys as often as you can. Justin Justice is a name. Strong name. Luke Bassey's also an 80. Dom Nelson was uh, just outside the top five in talent there. Maybe, what, at number six? Because there were five 80s. But overall, we did pretty well with identifying the top players in the class. Jarrell Palmer has superstar X-Factor. Anytime they're into the low to mid 80s, especially high 80s, they will have superstar X-Factor every time. If you draft an 85 overall player, they're going to have superstar X Factor. Now, those guys are quite rare, obviously, but even low to mid 80s, double superstar X Factor. Again, the class is juiced. If you just leave everything on normal, you're not going to get, you know, two superstar X Factors in the same class, probably. And maybe even a third here in Dom Nelson. These guys are just freaks. And uh, I'm going to do a video in the near future three superstar X Factors. <laughs> I'm going to do a video in the near future um, trying to get as many freak players as possible. But yeah, we went three for three on Superstar X Factors at the top of the draft. Pretty good. And then there is talent down the board too. Alonzo Fitzsimmons, or he is normal. But that's because I didn't draft him. CPU did. But yeah, that's how you draft and scout Superstar X Factors. Drafted three players, all Superstar X Factor. That's getting lucky a bit. You got to get lucky a little bit, but... When you take the best players in the draft, it gets a little bit easier, especially when you're dealing with potential generational players. But that's how to scout in this game. That's how to draft. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.